Hello, this is Buona from Buona.tv, and today I want to talk about the El Gato Wave 3. Finally got it. It's here. Remember when the, the, uh, the teaser came out? Let me grab the box here. Remember when the teaser came out for this guy? Uh, and everybody was like, what is it? What is it? I mean, we kind of, we saw the, the, the little grooves in it and everything. It was like, man, it kind of looks like a microphone, but I don't know. It's got a knob. Does, is it a mixer? Is it, what is it? You know, and now we can finally answer that question of what the Elgato wave, uh, I guess you call it colon three, but I'm going to call it the wave three. Uh, I'm going to read some of the, the things off of the box here. Superior circuitry. Uh, Anti-clipping technology, we'll talk about, ow, we'll talk about that in a second. Zero latency monitoring, uh, multifunctional control dial. And when they say, let's go back to that zero latency monitoring. There's actually a jack. There's a three and a half millimeter jack on the microphone itself to monitor. So when they say zero latency monitoring, I kind of believe them because it's right on the mic. Uh, capacitive mute sensor. So it's a little button at the top that doesn't. It's not mechanical, but it's sensitive to your touch. Uh, internal pop filter is built into the mic, so you don't need a pop filter. And it has a modular mount. So the mount that it comes with, sorry, I keep moving away. The mount that has come with is here, but I have an optional shock mount. Home of the boxes. I have an optional shock mount here, which I have applied to my, uh, my stand that I had my previous mic on. And I had a high LPR 40 mic. Um, and this one, I gotta say, I'm liking it so far. So what's involved with this? What's involved with the Elgato Wave 3? Um, so it is what you think it is. It's a microphone that's built for streamers. So what do streamers do? We like to monitor different types of sounds, monitor and control different volumes. A lot of us have hardware mixers. A lot of us have went and bought some aftermarket stuff and you know, we, we like to turn certain elements of our stream down, whether it be the music, whether it be uh, voice comms on Discord or whatever voice app you're using, whether it be a, a browser playing music or playing a video, your microphone. You may want to mute certain things. You may want to mute the mic. Uh, you may want to have tighter control over what is uh, what is played in certain segments of your stream. So what Elgato, as they always do, they think about streamers. They, they are streamers. They think about streamers and how they behave. So this thing already has tight integration naturally with the Elgato Stream Deck. The Stream Deck comes with some preset profiles that you can import uh, once you install the plugin. And it includes everything from muting sources to, uh, to adjusting the microphone settings to turn off some of the features that are available, which include things, uh, which include things like, and I'm gonna say what these things are, the proper way. I'm gonna go in here and read them exactly what they are. The enhanced, enhanced low cut filter, and clip guard. So what are those two things? Let's let's discuss those for a second. Enhanced low cut filter. And when you hover over it, it says that it will remove low frequencies. And if you're gonna be talking to the mic from a distance greater than 0.5 meters, that's what that's for. So it's kind of like a noise cancellation or a noise filtering thing if you're going to be far away from the mic. Uh, so if you're going to be half a meter away from the mic or further, you turn that on. Clip guard is exactly what you think it is. It's a compressor. Essentially, it's going to protect you from clipping if you scream. Streamers, including myself, we stream. Or, no, we do stream. Streamers, including myself, we scream like crazy. So turning clip guard on implements a built-in compressor. Now you're probably saying, Borna, how good is the compressor? You know, I don't really have any kind of data as to how much it can compress, but I screamed loud, very loud, and I don't clip. So for my streaming purposes, it fits just fine. You've got gain control, you've got output volume, you've got mic PC mix, which I'm not completely positive what that does like i assume that the the imps the, the mic pc mix will give priority or give more uh sound to the mic versus the pc because it's a slider that goes left and right but when i tested it it didn't quite work right so i'm gonna have to go back and revisit it and see what i did wrong so i've already added some inputs for my old mic in case i want to go back to that uh i have a input for my uh 
I basically just use what they have. They have system, which is your desktop audio, music. I mapped uh, I mapped my Pretzel Rocks app to the music. That's what I use for my live stream, Pretzel.rocks. It's an application I can download. I mapped that to the music and I mapped my browser to the browser one and the voice chat. I mapped Discord to that. So how do you map it? There is a button at the top of the Wavelink app, right? And you click that and it takes you right to Windows control panel. Now, a lot of this stuff that we we use like software like Banana and a lot of other third party apps, virtual audio cables used to be one. You used to be able to route audio to different audio sources. That's built into Windows now. So what Elgato has done is that they are, uh, they're actually pointing you to that setting. So that you can go in there and set different applications to point to different inputs and output audio devices. So it made it very simple. If I had pretzel.app open, I clicked on the button in Wavelink and then I saw pretzel app and I can set the output of that to go to whatever uh, Elgato device that I've created. Very, very simple. So if you look at a Wavelink app, there's two different volume sliders. There's one for your local, for your local monitoring. And then there's the one that looks like a triangle with a dot and some waves come out of it. And that is your stream output. So note that at the bottom, the stream mix at the bottom will go to a, a device called stream output. So you have two different volume sliders, your local one and your stream slider. Very, very cool for streamers to use right in, right built into the software. So if you want it to be a little bit louder in your end, but not as so loud on the stream, you can control two different volume sets. So many times I've been streaming and I want to I want things to be lower on my end, but people say, I can't hear it, one, I can't hear it. So now I can easily do that. Like I said, a lot of this stuff could be done with third party apps and all this stuff. And even hardware mixers are coming out that has this stuff. But Elgato has put together a very, very tight package with the Wavelink app, the microphone, and hard buttons on here to control a lot of things, including muting, including the, the PC mix, including your local uh, monitoring volume. And also, what's the, what's the third one there? I gotta look at it. Microphone, your microphone gain, basically your microphone gain. You can turn it up and down. Uh, so that is, in a nutshell, a large part of what the Elgato Wave offers. Uh, you can tell by the video what the voice quality is. I haven't touched anything. Like I have everything set to default, uh, I went in and I set the gain to a, a reasonable, it's like at, uh, what's the gain at? 30%. Uh, I've got the mic PC mix set to 20% mic and PC 80%. And like I said, I, I feel like it didn't make a big difference, so I might be doing something wrong there. And I turned on clip guard. So the audio quality is out of the box right now. It's pretty much out of the box. I have no filters enable, enabled on my recording software. Uh, it's all raw. Turn all that stuff off, and I'm just relying on this mic. And the mic quality, based on my initial testing, is acceptable. You're not going to get studio quality, deep podcast mic, but it's going to be close. It's going to be better than a majority of headset mics. It's even going to be a major better than a lot of these condenser mics and, and other types of mics that uh, uh, streamers are using these days. Uh, out of the box, I think it's configured quite quite nicely. Elgato Wave Three. I don't have a price. But I will be updating the description with the price once it comes out. Because as of the recording of this video, it's actually not out yet. So I don't know what the price is. And Elgato sent me, El, I'm sorry, Corsair, which owns Elgato, sent me uh, the Wave 3. And I, I am going to I'm gonna sell the crap out of this. This is, this is really, really nice. Tight integration with the Stream Deck. You got buttons. You got so many options to set up things in your Stream Deck to mute your mic to mute different things, uh, to, to, to adjust levels. It's got steppers to, to go 10% up or 10% down. You can you can set it to a certain level. Like I have a button on mine right now that will set volumes to like 10%, like the music. Like if I need to talk to my stream and my, I wanna turn my music down, I don't wanna have to go boop, 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 hit a button multiple times. I can set a single press to set the music to 10%. That's a great example. And the same thing for my browser. Like if I'm gonna be playing stuff through Epidemic Sound, uh, in my browser, which I'm probably going to be doing next stream, I can set my browser volume to 10% if I need to turn the music down and set it back to like 30 or 40%, 50%, whatever I had of that right on the stream deck. The plugin's there. Very, very nice.
So I'm gonna be doing more testing. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be using this thing. I'm gonna be learning about it. Uh, as time goes on, I'll probably put together uh, some guides on how you can best utilize it. Because right now I'm in learning mode. I'm kind of sucking it all in. I've only been using it for less than a day. Actually, I've been using it for about two hours now. <laughs> so there's a lot I need to learn. There's a lot I need to get under my belt. But this is going to be the first probably of like one or two, maybe three videos where I talk about the Elgato Wave. This is my first look at it. I'm impressed. Elgato Wave 3. All in one microphone, all in one microphone solution. This is going to be your arsenal. Like when a streamer needs to buy equipment, this is going to be one thing you're going to look at because like with the stream deck, like with the green screen, like with the capture cards, uh, all the all the different things that Elgato has, the cam link, which I'm using right now, uh, the, the cam link, which I'm using right now to, 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 to record this, all that stuff, right? One company, Total Solution. Now, the only problem is, is it going to be in stock? Because everybody wants this stuff. <laughs> it's a good problem to have. Thank you for watching the video. If you do comment, if you do like the video, please comment, like, subscribe, and also join my Patreon. Thanks, patrons. You guys are awesome. Patreon.com slash Buona. And please, please check it out if you want to support my stream and my YouTube efforts and everything else that I do. This is how I make a living. You guys make it happen. Thank you so much. The Elgato Wave 3, man. I got a lot more to say. Tune into my live stream. I'll be talking more about it. This is just my first look. I wanted to show you guys on the day it comes out, my thoughts and a little bit about it. But it is. I'm enjoying it. Uh, I think this is a winner. Take care. Have a good day. Hello, this is Buona from Buona.tv, and today I want to talk about Elite Dangerous. Elite Dangerous just received a very, very substantial patch in the form of the Fleet Carriers that came out last week, and I've been really enjoying my time with it. Uh, I've been looking forward to Fleet Carriers for a long time, even though there were some parts of it that I wish could be improved. I'm overall having a really, really good time. One of the things I want to talk about today is just how, how many players have been mining. Low temperature diamond mining has been a big, big credit making venture for a very long time when frontier announced that they were gonna have a maintenance patch a lot of us including myself were anticipating the possible nerf to subsurface drilling if you don't know what that is that is a form of mining where you drill uh, uh not completely through the rock not you don't you don't make it explode but you just drill deeper to get more nodes as of the fleet carrier patch the subsurface drilling was significantly buffed 